Uh, my subject this evening is William Wines Phelps, who is best known in Mormon circles as a prominent associate of Joseph Smith, the founder of Mormonism, uh, who published and edited the first Mormon newspaper and drafted some of Smith's most important compositions uh, that, uh, in retrospect, incorporated Masonic language and ideas. Uh, Bruce Van Orden has written an excellent biography of Phelps, which has been very helpful in my study, which is focused uh, on uh, his early years in New York State from, uh, and I'll cover from 1800 to 1831, uh, and uh, where he became a Freemason, edited three newspapers, and was a prominent participant in the anti-Masonic movement, which is, I'm sure all of you know, uh, started in uh, New York State. So I'll first uh, discuss a little bit about the background, uh, the, the Masonic background. Uh, Stephen Bullock uh, has demonstrated that during the first decades of the 19th century, some New York Masons uh, identified their institution with Christianity and were convinced that it was, quote, destined to fulfill the purposes and proclamation of the truths of Christianity, close quote. They believed that Masonic rituals offered important additional elements for Christianity that should be reattached or blended into their Christian faiths as part of a purification process and to provide a pathway to achieving a reunification with God. Salem Town, who was a New York Christian minister and Royal Arch Mason, uh, insisted in 1818 that, quote, ancient masonry was, in a very important sense, ancient Christianity that King Solomon organized and systematized speculative Freemasonry, which thereafter flourished in Egypt, and that speculative Freemasonry comprises those great and fundamental principles which constitute the very essence of the Christian system. He concluded that, quote, the great plan of human redemption can be viewed in the temple where every saint will be filled with the fullness of God forever and ever. Close quote. Some of the young men who joined uh, Freemasonry in New York during this period were clerics uh, who were attracted to the institution's religious claims. David Bernard, who later became an anti-Mason, uh, who was an, a Baptist pastor, acknowledged that, quote, soon after I commenced the, the service of Christ, Freemasonry was commended to my attention as an institution from heaven moral, benevolent, of great antiquity, the twin sister of Christianity, possessing a patronage of the wise, the great, and good, and highly important to the ministers of the Lord Jesus. Well, beginning in 1800, William Phelps lived near the center of New York State in the township of Homer, uh, no relation to me, of course, uh, but uh, named after uh, Homer the poet uh, in Cortland County. It was there that he was probably initiated in Freemasonry in Homer Lodge 137 and became a master mason. We do know, uh, and this is based on documents that I was able to find uh, at the uh, Livingston Library, that he signed a petition in May, 1822 uh, with 13 other master masons in Homer to obtain a warrant for the creation of a new lodge in the adjacent growing town of Cortland. And on June 6, 1823, the New York Grand Lodge warranted the work of Cortland Lodge number 371. In 1820, uh, Elijah A. Roberts and D.G. Uh, Hall began publishing the Western Courier in Homer, but within a year moved the newspaper to Cortland. And in October, 1822, Phelps' name appeared as the editor. And on November 20, 1823, the name was changed to the Cortland Courier. The newspaper was a partisan Republican paper that included 
like many small town papers, editorials, legislative proceedings, legal notices, marriage and deaths announcements, letters, advertisements, and even poetry. Uh, during his editorship, uh, Phelps published two poems, both entitled Freemason's Dream, that celebrated the cohesiveness of Freemasonry, the temple ritual referred to as labor, the refreshment which took place at the end of each meeting uh, and after the ritual was completed, and even the secrecy attached uh, associated with the craft. Now, as a side note, I'll mention that uh, this, uh, one of the two poems uh, was 18 quatrains, uh, and had been previously identified by Rick Runner uh, in his book, Mormon Parallels, uh, and uh, was most likely utilized uh, by many of the lodges of New York State. It's also uh, listed as a, uh, uh, one of the entries of Walton uh, Freemason, uh, the, the uh, bibliography of Freemasonry. Now, just as an example, to show you the type of language that were uh, in these poems. Uh, the first poem uh, published in November uh, 1822 celebrates the combination and secrecy of masonry. Quote, now let me, uh, I should get this up, I'm sorry. Uh, the keeping of secrets in union so long, there's no combination so firm as Freemason. No bond of sweet friendship so lasting and strong, though kingdoms doth quarrel for riches and laurels, though Christians in churches off wrangle and jar, there's no such invasion among the Freemasons, no rapture, no rumored internal war. The following uh, year, uh, the uh, same newspaper under Phelps uh, editorship published uh, another poem, which was also entitled A Freemason's Dream, uh, which traces the ritual journey through the temple where prerequisites or passwords are required to enter. Pegasus liked aloft we soared, a spacious temple near we drew. Prerequisites were asked before, its inner beauties I could view. I was next, uh, I asked, or I, I next was passed to the West Gate, its further beauties to behold. And there a while I had to wait till in due form my name was told. Then kneeling at the door, I saw more beauties than I here can tell. Life's checkered path our walk must be and strive in friendship to excel. The inclusion of these poems. Uh, by Phelps uh, demonstrates how strongly uh, some of his readers and Phelps himself uh, approved of Freemasonry. And uh, their, uh, the uh, approach uh, was included uh, in the newspaper, even though they was, it was by no means a, known as a Masonic newspaper. Uh, in fact, more than anything else, it was a paper involving politics, uh, which included uh, plenty of personal attacks. Uh, during the same period, the Cortland Repository, which was a competing newspaper, accused Phelps of being a fifer, uh, that is playing a fife and deserting the army during the War of 1812. While such accusation, uh, accusations were commonplace, a more dramatic event occurred in September 1825 when an arsonist destroyed Phelps' office and the newspaper uh, was sold. So basically, uh, although uh, Phelps was, uh, had joined Freemasonry, uh, it was not clear what Phelps did uh, to uh, why Phelps joined Freemasonry. Uh, whether it was for the religious purposes, such as David Bernard uh, pointed out, uh, or uh, whether it was for other reasons. It's also not clear uh, what Phelps did to make a living from 1825 to 1827. Uh, 
but when uh, the anti-Masonic uh, period arose beginning in 1826, uh, it eventually afforded Phelps a new opportunity to edit another newspaper. Uh, in the fall of that year, a New York Baptist minister named John Glazier Stearns renounced Freemasonry, and this is prior to the Morgan Affair, by the way, and published a book entitled An Inquiry into the Nature and Tendency of Speculative Freemasonry. It was not an expose of Masonic rituals, uh, but instead his intention was to show that Masonry and Christianity are distinct institutions and that they never should be blended. Uh, in other words, it was a frontal attack on uh, Salem Town's uh, argument to the contrary. Uh, Stearns quoted liberally from Salem Town, uh, particularly his claim that its rituals, quote, save men to conduct them to heaven and bestow on them the rewards of a blessed immortality. And he argued that it was time to examine uh, the claims of a society which endangers the purity of our civil institutions. Well, during that same year, as I think all of you know, uh, William Morgan uh, became the lightning rod in the increasingly vitriolic debate concerning the essential nature of Freemasonry. Morgan, who became a Royal Archmason before he moved to Batavia, became a bitter enemy of Freemasonry and threatened to expose its rituals, including the degrees of the Royal Arch, uh, and uh, created quite a stir among his brothers. Now, I'm sure that most of you know that uh, the, this familiar uh, story about Morgan, and it's a very complicated story. Uh, but needless to say, uh, Morgan was abducted uh, and uh, disappeared and was never heard of again. And of course, uh, this created a, a situation in which claims were made that he had been abducted by Masons uh, because of his threat to uh, write an exposure of their uh, rituals. Uh, in October, uh, David Cade Miller, uh, who uh, was the editor of the Batavia Republican Advocate, uh, indicated that his uh, uh, office uh, was raided. Uh, there was an attempt to start that on fire as well. Uh, and uh, that thereafter, he rushed and published uh, Morgan's expose, which included uh, ironically, the first three degrees of masonry, but not the uh, uh, Royal Arch uh, ritual. Uh, but uh, the uh, expose was filled with very specific descriptions of signs, tokens, obligations, and penalties under the ironic title of Illustrations of Masonry by one of the fraternity. The reason that's ironic is because that was Preston's uh, title for his book. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Phelps, uh, after uh, he was forced to leave uh, his paper because the uh, offices were burned down, suffered severe financial uh, problems for two years, basically 1825 to 1827. Uh, and uh, in October of 1827, the Cortland Observer published a notice of an order executed by a common pleas judge uh, that Phelps debtors, two Phelps debtors that is, that he was insolvent. Uh, during the same period, uh, he became, gradually became an inactive mason. The manuscript financial returns, which again, uh, I was able to find uh, in the Livingston uh, Masonic Library, uh, demonstrate uh, that uh, he uh, paid his dues for the years uh, 1823 to 1826, at least as of June 17, 1826, but that he did not pay them uh, for May 1826 through May 9, 1827. Uh, nevertheless, there's no indication that Phelps formally abandoned the craft at that point, 
uh, and his failure to pay dues could have been based on his financial straits rather than his reaction to Morgan's disappearance. But uh, during the same month that uh, this notice was uh, uh, published, a young uh, publisher by the name of R. M. Bloomer approached Phelps about editing an anti-Masonic newspaper uh, to be named the Lake Light in Trumansburg, which is about uh, 35 miles uh, to the west of uh, uh, Cortland uh, Township. Bloomer, who was just uh, 20, uh, had been the proprietor with another uh, individual by the name of Orsamus Clark of the Seneca Emporium, which was an anti-Masonic newspaper uh, published in Ovid, uh, New York, which had just ceased operations after being in business for less than three months. And although Phelps, uh, who by that time was 35 years old, had not yet publicly renounced Freemasonry, uh, he gladly accepted uh, Bloomer's offer uh, to publish uh, this newspaper. In October, uh, the, uh, the Lake Light uh, published its first editorial uh, and uh, revealed that the newspaper's mission was to, quote, be an anti-Masonic and true American, close quote, newspaper, where our uh, paper circulates, quote, there shall be more light, close quote. Throughout Phelps' uh, tenure as editor, the Lake Light mockingly uh, replicated the language of the poems that uh, previously appeared uh, in uh, the Cortland Courier. Uh, and referred to Freemasonry as, quote, a secret combination, quote, an extensive combination, quote, a midnight association, quote, a self-constituted institution, quote, a combination of evildoers, quote, an occult combination, and quote, a combination of men who stood among us as respectable citizens and occupied an honorable standing in society who are bound to do it by their nocturnal oaths, close quote. The paper compared Masons to, quote, a gang of midnight robbers, close quote, who, quote, like secret banditti, close quote, conspired to commit, quote, cold-hearted villainy and bloodshed, close quote, during, quote, midnight deliberations, close quote, within the walls of their nocturnal dwellings in their caves. Phelps, uh, finally in uh, January of 1820, and again, these quotations uh, were in the like light from the uh, first publication in October uh, through December. Uh, and finally in October, 1828, Phelps published his own renunciation of uh, Freemasonry uh, in which he wrote, quote, secret societies are incompatible with the principles and derogatory in the constitution of free government, close quote. He then announced that, quote, being engaged in conducting a paper devoted to, quote, equally to all, close quote, and having regularly initiated, passed and raised to the degree of Master Mason, he withdrew from any connection with Masonic lodges and renounced the self-organized institution of Freemasonry. But more significantly, Phelps asserted that, quote, I shall hereafter consider myself at liberty to answer any question relative to the secret that I may be acquainted with, for in the language of the learned Dr. Paley, an obligation from which a man can discharge himself by his own act is no obligation at all. Close quote. Further, he wrote, the guilt, therefore, if there be in denouncing the system of speculative Freemasonry, lies uh, not in breaking Masonic oaths. Now, Phelps' stipulation that he would no longer keep the Masonic society, uh, Masonic secrets inviolate, uh, was consistent with arguments published by many other renouncing Masons. 
Following Morgan's disappearance, these men shared an intense motivation to expose the mysteries embedded in the rituals of the institution. They reasoned that Masonic oaths of secrecy were no longer justifiable because in their view, masonry had been become corrupt. Now, this coincided, uh, that is Phelps renunciation coincided with uh, the organization by David Bernard. And recall he was the uh, minister who joined Freemasonry because of his religious uh, claims. Uh, but uh, after the Morgan affair, uh, he organized a, a convention of renouncing Freemasons who would thereafter be called anti-Masons, uh, which he intended uh, to be a non-political gathering designed to provide a religious response to Masonry, investigate it vigorously, and demand more indictments uh, against the craft, uh, against craft members. Uh, he claimed he was the first Mason to re, uh, renounce the craft after Morgan's disappearance at a time when, quote, few had the moral courage to openly dissent from the Masonic institution and denounce it uh, as wicked and dangerous. His plan was to assemble former Masons who had since renounced uh, and uh, then to publish the numerous rituals uh, which he believed would cause, uh, which was the, the surest method to guarantee the destruction uh, of Freemasonry. Now, I believe that that's the reason that uh, uh, Phelps renounced because uh, he had not renounced up until that time. Uh, and he was one of uh, 33 uh, former Masons, including prominent businessmen, uh, including David Bernard, George Washington Harris, who was Morgan's landlord, David Cade Miller, who published Morgan's books following his uh, disappearance, John G. Stearns, the author of the first attack on Salemstown's claim uh, concerning Masonry's religious origins, and perhaps most important, Solomon Southwick, who was the editor of the uh, uh, most prominent anti Masonic newspaper, the National Observer that was published in uh, Albany, uh, New York. The delegates uh, assembled in February of 1828 uh, to listen to testimonials that Morgan's illustrations of Freemasonry was accurate, voted that the obligations they had taken as Freemasons were not binding, consistent with uh, uh, the uh, renunciation of uh, Phelps and others, and decided to publish a new expose of the higher uh, of the high degrees. They attended uh, sessions in which speakers attacked Freemasonry because of its secrecy and the great danger it posed to other Republican uh, institutions. Uh, this uh, convention was an opportunity for Phelps because he was chosen to serve on various committees, including those which prepared the degrees of Freemasonry above that of master for publication, drafted a memorial to Congress to institute an inquiry into the uh, facts respecting the incarceration of a free citizen in the arsenal of Fort Niagara. That's where they claimed that Morgan was taken, of course. Phelps also helped prepare a circular address to Masons and non-Masons uh, to attend a later convention. Uh, in uh, these, The convention was held in Leroy, New York, uh, and they planned to hold a, uh, another convention there where a declaration of independence from the Freemasonry would be read and signed. The convention passed a resolution uh, asking various anti-Masonic newspapers, including Phelps' own Lake Light, uh, to publish the proceedings uh, in toto. Now, prior to Phelps' uh, attendance at the Leroy Convention uh, in February, uh, he had already made plans uh, to uh, edit 
uh, and publish another Masonic newspaper uh, in Canandaigua, which was an opulent and influential village, 10 times uh, the size of uh, Trumansburg and much better connected. Uh, it would be named the Ontario Phoenix. Uh, in its announcement, Phelps defined Freemasonry as an institution uh, which in the dark ages was formed by tyrants for self ends and has been uh, continued through blood and terror for individual uh, or party uh, benefit. Uh, the notice continued to appear in the lake light until March uh, 19, which was approximately a month after the first convention that was held in Leroy. Uh, and uh, at that time, uh, Phelps uh, left Trumansburg and moved to Canandaigua. Now on March 18, Phelps published the first number of the Ontario Phoenix, uh, the, uh, uh, which uh, during the uh, following months uh, replicated many of the same arguments that the Lake Clyde uh, had previous, previously uh, made. Uh, during the uh, interim uh, between the beginning of uh, the Ontario Phoenix and the uh, next convention to be held in Leroy in July, uh, Phelps and the other committee members who were appointed, including uh, Solomon Southwick and uh, David Miller, who uh, uh, published illustrations of uh, masonry, submitted a circular to invite masons and anti-masons to join, quote, the uh, holy work uh, for the purpose of, quote, unveiling to the world a secret association. Their goal was to eventually, as I mentioned, publish uh, Masonic rituals so that the institution could no longer, uh, in their view, quote, pray on the credulity of the weak and unsuspecting and une unexperienced uh, youth. Uh, the committee uh, reported uh, that the uh, delegates uh, had voted that the obligations of Freemasonry were neither, le neither legally, morally, or regularly or religiously binding, and that another committee was assigned to procure and prepare for publications uh, the secrets uh, of the order. Uh, the uh, following that invitation, uh, the uh, the convention was held in Leroy. Uh, 101 former Masons attended that convention, uh, but perhaps even more significantly, uh, it was attended, observed, or uh, critiqued by thousands of onlookers. Uh, there on July 4, 1828, Phelps signed the Declaration of Independence, which stated that secret societies were dangerous to the government uh, and provided reasons to abolish the order of Freemasonry and destroy uh, its influence uh, on our government. The declaration included references to Masonry's attempt to usurp, quote, religious forms and ceremonies, as well as, quote, an unholy commingling of divine truth with impious uh, human inventions. In other words, uh, the focus uh, of anti-masonry at that time was still a religious focus, uh, not a political focus at all. The convention listened to reports of the various committees uh, that had been formed in February and voted to publish the various uh, Masonic rituals which the committees had collected. Uh, following the convention, Phelps uh, focused on publishing uh, the Ontario Phoenix, which became one of the most prominent and quoted anti-Masonic uh, newspapers in New York State. Now, although most of the issues of the Ontario Phoenix do not survive, uh, it is possible to reconstruct some of Phelps' editorial content because of the common practice by newspapers to reprint articles. Uh, and in particular, this was the case of the anti-Masonic uh, press. Um, now, 
after that occurred and during uh, Phelps uh, edit, edit, editorializing for the Ontario Press uh, in August 1828, uh, which was uh, not which was not following the uh, the convention, uh, a the first New York State Anti Masonic Conference was held in Utica, and thereafter the Anti Masonic movement was overtaken by political forces. Uh, Thurlow Weed quickly became one of the driving forces of anti masonry in Western New York and memorialized uh, the New York legislature, giving the facts uh, about the Morgan abduction, explaining the difficulties of apprehending the guilty uh, and asking that the kidnapping laws uh, be strengthened, which they were. Meanwhile, uh, a rift occurred within anti-masonry. Uh, for example, uh, the Ontario Phoenix criticized the Utica August Convention uh, for attempting to divert the attention of delegates to politics and to promote candidates for the U.S. presidency, but reported that, quote, the still small voice uh, whispered to the 10,000 freemen who would sound more powerful uh, unless the word that uh, assembled in Leroy uh, were to be put down uh, and to save our government from the labyrinth of ruin planned by the midnight overseers of murder and treason. In other words, the uh, anti-Mason uh, who ran the conventions in uh, Leroy were not very pleased with its takeover uh, by uh, political forces. Uh, the Phoenix also published uh, various uh, correspondence uh, concerning uh, the attempts uh, by uh, those who uh, were uh, who eventually successfully created a third party. It was actually the first successful third party uh, in U.S. politics. Uh, but uh, after the election, which resulted in the defeat of anti-Masonic uh, candidates for governor and lieutenant governor. Uh, Phelps uh, criticized, quote, the maneuvers of artful men to lead the patriots of anti-Masonry into political scrambles to satisfy some office watching the raven of the state or nation. They are uh, safe uh, on their uh, own bottom. Uh, the paper also noted that during the election, public newspapers failed to mention the disappearance of Morgan. In other words, it became more political than uh, the original events, which uh, constituted the catalyst for the anti-Masonic uh, period uh, movement. The following year, 1829, uh, the Leroy Convention's goal to publish the rituals of Freemasonry was fulfilled when Bernard's uh, light on Masonry, uh, which was eventually called the Bible of Anti-Masonry, was published. The book included the exposés of 48 rituals uh, that uh, Bernard hoped would result in the complete destruction of Freemasonry. Uh, interestingly, the title of Bernard's book was strikingly similar to language which Phelps had used more than a year earlier. Uh, in his prospectus for the Ontario Phoenix, in which he promised that the newspaper would, quote, give the people more light in masonry, close quote. Now, in September 1830, Richard Bloomer, the uh, young gentleman uh, who was the proprietor of the Ontario Phoenix, died in uh, uh, New York, uh, and, uh, uh, and he was only 23, believe it or not, a very young entrepreneur. This development uh, was significant because Bloomer brought Phelps out of relative obscurity and placed him within the middle of the anti-Masonic movement. Following Bloomer's death uh, and the uh, expanding politicization of anti-Masonry, uh, Phelps 
uh, began to feel increasingly marginalized and frustrated uh, with the movement. Eventually, Phelps uh, became alienated uh, with fellow anti-Masons. Uh, and uh, in uh, 1830, actually uh, 1831, uh, while still publishing the Ontario uh, Phoenix, uh, a article appeared in the Ithaca Journal uh, that included uh, reference to uh, Phelps' letter uh, in which uh, he revealed uh, that uh, he was, uh, uh, had been incarcerated uh, in jail uh, in uh, Lyons, uh, New York. Uh, the uh, letter uh, includes uh, background information. Uh, it revealed that Phelps uh, had become a, quote, very intelligent Mormonite, besides being very moral and religious anti-Mason, and that he had come out against his former colleagues and cronies. It then suggested in a teasing tone that the Freemason or the Freeman of Old Ontario should either restore him to his wife, close quote, or organize him as speedily as possible. Now, while the journal's reference to Morganize is a clear allusion to disposing of Phelps in the same manner uh, that was alleged to have occurred to William Morgan, the Freeman of Old Ontario is uh, much more obtuse. But Rick Runder, uh, who uh, is the uh, author of uh, Mormon Parallels, uh, which has many uh, parallels between masonry and Mormonism, has suggested that given Phelps' new interest in Mormonism, it may refer to the Palmyra Freeman, which was a anti-Masonic newspaper uh, that uh, Joseph Smith's mentor, Martin Harris, uh, had requested without success to publish the Book of Mormon. This reference in the uh, Freeman of Old Ontario would have been a clever play on words since uh, Palmyra was part of Ontario County until 1823, when Wayne County was created and Phelps' own newspaper was the Ontario Phoenix. The Freeman Ontario uh, may also suggest the identity of the pretended anti-Masons that Phelps uh, referred to in his letter uh, after the uh, Palmyra Free, uh, Freeman folded in 1829. His publisher, Jonathan A. Hadley, with Myron Holly, established another anti-Masonic newspaper in Lyons in January 1831, just a couple of months before Phelps was incarcerated there in a debtor's prison. Uh, and remember, uh, Phelps indicated that uh, he had been uh, sued uh, by pretended anti-Masons. And Phelps and Holly, who would have undoubtedly been suspicious of his alignment with Mormonism, uh, could have uh, been the pretended anti-Masons that Phelps uh, described uh, in his letter. Not, but not all Masons uh, turned on Phelps. Uh, when the Republican Monitor reported uh, his uh, resignation from the Phoenix, it observed that he had been an efficient laborer in the cause of equal rights following his resignation from the Phoenix. And when Phelps left New York, and joined the Mormons in Ohio. It uh, is not surprising that local newspapers, both Masonic and anti-Masonic, noted this development. The Ethicat Journal, in another possible allusion to Hadley and Holly, concluded that Phelps' uh, conversion was much more consistent than many of his anti-Masonic editors. Uh, he had, uh, and that he had chosen a religion which corresponds admirably, admirably with its politics. And I'm sorry I didn't keep the, uh, the uh, PowerPoint going, but this is a summary. Phelps was 
initiated, passed, and raised Homer Lodge 137 in 1822. Uh, he signed a petition for the creation of uh, Cortland Lodge. These uh, documents on the PowerPoint are documents that are uh, part of the Livingston Masonic Library uh, collection. Uh, 1825, an arsonist burned the offices of uh, and the Cortland Courier was sold. <clears throat> He uh, uh, was declared insolvent in 1827, became the editor of the Lake Light uh, between 1827 and 28, uh, published his renunciation uh, uh, just before uh, the uh, convention uh, that uh, David Bernard planned uh, for uh, in Leroy in February, uh, which he attended uh, in February. Uh, just after that, he became the editor of the Ontario Phoenix in Canadagua. Uh, and then in July of 1828, he attended the anti-Masonic meeting in Leroy. Uh, and uh, uh, within uh, two and a half years, which I haven't got to yet, uh, after uh, he had become alienated from anti-Masonry, he took a trip to Palmyra, New York. Uh, in December, where he met uh, Joseph Smith. Shortly thereafter, in March 1831, he was imprisoned in uh, Lyons for failure to pay, uh, quote, pretended anti-Masons, which uh, were uh, probably uh, the uh, proprietors of uh, the newspaper in uh, Palmyra. Uh, and uh, then uh, he, uh, in uh, uh, shortly after, uh, between uh, meeting Joseph Smith in December uh, and uh, after being uh, released from uh, jail in Lyons, uh, traveled in Kirtland, Ohio, which was uh, by then uh, the main location of the movements uh, he was baptized. Now, let me just conclude and then I'll open it up for questions. Um, although some Mormons uh, have uh, insisted that early Mormon converts uh, were not influenced by anti-masonry, uh, surely uh, Phelps was. Uh, and it's uh, difficult to uh, imagine that he overlooked uh, some of the same familiar language in the Book of Mormon, such as secret combinations and robbers, and Masonic banditti, uh, which he had used in his own anti-Masonic publications. Phelps' anti-Masonic uh, editorship prepared him for his first church assignment after he was baptized uh, in Kirtland. Uh, and uh, he, were, he was sent by Joseph Smith to edit the first Mormon newspaper called The Evening and the Morning Star, which was consistent with his toast to William Morgan following the final session of the uh, 4th of July, where he toasted uh, William Morgan uh, uh, in uh, similar terms. Uh, Phelps remained mindful of his anti-masonry when he wrote a letter to his former associates at the Ontario Phoenix to inform them he had no concerns about secret societies in Missouri. Now, Phelps uh, continued to have a reputation as an anti-masonry, uh, even among the Mormons. Uh, and, uh, of course, the uh, parallel that many people point to is between uh, the uh, Masonic rituals and the Mormon temple ceremony. Uh, and uh, this was preceded uh, six weeks uh, when uh, the Nauvoo Lodge was created and most Mormon men became Freemasons. Uh, Phelps very prudently did not attempt to join that lodge. And it is unlikely that Mormon Masons, especially his fellow New Yorkers, Hiram Smith and Heber C. Kimball, would have welcomed him to join the lodge because he had renounced the craft and published anti-Masonic newspapers. But interestingly, Phelps' son, William Waterman Phelps, also known as Junior, who was born in 1823, did join uh, Nauvoo Lodge. Finally, uh, Phelps did enthusiastically embrace Joseph Smith's new temple ritual, 
uh, which has been compared to Masonic rituals when it was introduced in 1842. Since the new ceremony bore parallels to the rituals Phelps had experienced and later exposed, uh, his perspective of Smith's new liturgy must have been familiar to those of Mormon Masons who believed it represented the restoration of an ancient temple ritual which survived in only bits and pieces in the rituals of Freemasonry. Thank you.